All right, let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the second episode of Mary's Mantle, the spiritual retreat for heaven's help. First, I've enjoyed the first week so far. There's a couple of days that I've, I've been convicted uh, on the day of trust. I was convicted that afternoon of falling down and trusting in God, and uh, that afternoon a wonderful thing happened. So, so I'm sure all of you were, uh, have enjoyed the book. It's wonderfully written, it's very poetic. Uh, it just gets to the soul of the matter. Um, it's very human too. It's not too far out in the stars and too far out in this mystical galaxy. It's just right within our hearts and, and it's really act activities and actions that we all deal with every day. Deacon Dave is gonna do a wonderful presentation on the, on the rosary and really bring it home and uh, bring it to our hearts. So Deacon Dave. Can we begin by saying a Hail Mary? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may know, or you may not, that almost every pope for the last 140 years has written an encyclical letter on the value of the rosary. There was one pope, Pope Leo XIII, and he was the one, if you remember, that during mass, he had a vision. He heard and saw Satan coming before God and saying, I will be loosed. The scriptures say, I will be loosed. And if you give me a hundred years, I will destroy the church. And after he heard this, he was so severely shaken and he went back to his room and he prepared the, the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, right? St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. And he asked that it be said after every single mass and then he went on to write all these encyclicals on the rosary, the value of the rosary. So I think that says something. So let's take a step backwards and remember what is our goal? Everything we do, we do for one reason. We read the scriptures, we attend mass, we receive the sacraments, we pray, we try to live a faithful life, we go to confession, we do all these things and there's one reason. And it is to unite with the person of Jesus Christ it is union with God. That is our total goal. But why, why when we receive the Eucharist and we believe that it is God, Jesus, his entire person, body, blood, soul, divinity, that we receive, why aren't we made an immediate saint? Why don't we become a saint right away? We should. We're encountering the infinite, the infinite God. Do you know why? Because our pipes are clogged. Have you ever had a clogged pipe? <laughs> All right, nothing goes through, does it? Well, there's a pipe between us and God. We have a pipe and it goes to God and guess what? Our pipes are clogged with all kinds of stuff. One is original sin and the world we're born into and concupiscence, our desire to do things we shouldn't do, right? And our failings and our weaknesses. All of these things in the world, they clog our pipes. And so when we receive Holy Communion, we don't receive everything we are supposed to. We don't. What is the secret? How do you unclog your pipes? It is through prayer, through prayer. So prayer is so vital every single saint for almost a thousand years prayed the rosary and they recommended it many devoted their entire lives to the rosary so i'm going to tell you where it kind of came from today's rosary there was this, a man and his name was dominic guzman dominic guzman and he became saint dominic and he one day went into the forest because he was so sad because of the heresies and the sickness in the church, and the lack of faith in the clergy, and uh, the Albigensian heresy was rampant, and people were leaving the church 
and he was so saddened that he went into the forest to do renunciation and beg God's forgiveness. So he fasted for three days and he scourged himself. Back then they did a lot of that. And on the third day, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to him. And she didn't say, I want to give you the rosary. She said, the Holy Trinity wants to give you this weapon to fight against the evils and to confront these things. This is a weapon. And that's how she referred to the rosary. Our beautiful mother, right? So gentle, so loving. She said this was the weapon the Trinity wanted to give. So I know a lot of people in the church, they don't pray the rosary. And they don't pray the rosary because they have so many objections. They say it's, it's rote, repetitious. You know, I wander, my mind wanders. Well, it's kind of a, a basic prayer for grandmothers and elderly people, <laughs> you know. Uh, they want something more. They talk to God directly. But it's so amazing that every apparition of Our Lady, she either tells us to pray the rosary or she's holding the rosary in her hands. Every single one. So every saint has said the rosary. All the popes for the last 120 years have written encyclicals on the rosary, right? The Blessed Virgin Mary appears with the rosary. Do you think the rosary is important? My gosh, it's important. The clergy, you know, people that were in the clergy, they had Bibles. They were handwritten. There was no printing press. So everything had to be handwritten. So how valuable was a Bible? It was so, so expensive, right? And it took forever to write one, right? Can you imagine somebody having to write the Bible, the amount of work that went into a Bible? So who had them? Churches, clergy, you know, monasteries, uh, rich people, very wealthy people that could buy them, but the common man did not have the scriptures. So one of the things they did was they would decorate churches and they would tell these stories in stained glass and in saints, right? The images of saints and they would have different things in the church so that a common man could come in and meditate on the things of salvation, the things that God had revealed, right? Well, Our Lady hands this to Dominic and she says, this is the poor man's Psalter. What is a Psalter? You know what the Psalms are, right? The Psalms, well, clergy, every day of their life, they pray seven times a day the Psalms, and it's called the Psalter, or the Liturgy of the Hours, or the Breviary, you've heard of that, right? And a priest takes a vow and makes a promise that he will pray that faithfully every single day. And what's interesting is Fulton Sheen, Bishop Fulton Sheen, who's up for canonization, right? When he heard about a priest who was losing his faith or struggling, he said, ask him when he stopped praying the Psalter. Ask him when he stopped. So this rosary from Our Lady is the poor man's Psalter. And what does it do? It focuses on scripture. It focuses on the mystery of Christ's life. So one of the objections is that, gosh, you say all these Hail Marys and we're supposed to be praying to God and to Jesus, right? One of the objections is that, but if you pray the rosary properly, you meditate on the mysteries of Christ's life. We know that, right? And so one of the things when people object and they say, this is vain repetition, and scripture says, don't pray vain repetitious prayer. Our Protestant brothers and sisters, if some of you are here, you may have heard that. I heard that a lot as a youth when I was a Protestant. Those Catholics, they pray, wrote, vain, repetitious prayer. Basically, sometimes people got so bad that they would take a wheel, a little wheel you'd crank with your hands, and they would put a prayer and glue it to the wheel, and they would circle the wheel, and every time the wheel went around, they thought the prayer was going to heaven. Now that's vain, repetitious prayer. <laughs> bad, right? But the other thing is, it's vain repetition. Vain means meaningless. Can you pray the rosary in a meaningless way? You probably could, right? But if you pray it properly, it is not vain. It is repetitious. And I had somebody one time tell me this, you know, if uh, you have a spouse and uh, you tell her you love her, and then you don't tell her you love her anymore or him, 
And the spouse says, well, you never tell me you love me. He says, well, I, I don't want to be vain and repetitious. <laughs> so the rosary, even though it is repetitious, it is not vain if prayed properly. Okay, my, my mind wanders. I can't stay focused. It's just not if I try to pray the rosary. Well, I've got some suggestions, okay? How do we pray the rosary? Is that okay? Can I give you a few? You may know these already. First of all, you pray before you pray. You say, dear Lord, I invoke the Holy Spirit. You know, you, you say, Holy Spirit, come. Come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You say, Lord, help me pray from my heart. I don't want to just be repetitious. I don't want my mind to water. I want my heart to be in this, right? And then you imagine Jesus and Mary in front of you. Because who are you speaking to? Who is a rosary given to? You place it in the hands of Our Lady for her to present to her son, right? And then what do you do? Sometimes people just say, like they'll announce the mystery and then they'll just jump right into it. But really, what does John Paul II say? He said, when you pray the rosary, you should read, if you can, the little scripture verse about the mystery. So you announce the mystery, the Annunciation, and then you read, the angel Gabriel came to Mary, right? And he said, hail, full of grace. And you read the scripture. And then this is the key. Saint Ignatius Loyola, he, he was a master at this. You know, he developed the exercises and thousands of people were converted and their lives were changed. And he, the, many of the Jesuits believe that Our Lady appeared to him and gave him these exercises. But what are the exercises? When you read the mystery, read the scripture, Saint Ignatius says what you are supposed to do is place yourself into the mystery. Okay, place yourself in the mystery. And how do you do that? I'm going to give you a little secret. Some of you may know this, but God is outside of time. When we have our Mass, what happens? Jesus on Calvary is made present at that moment in the Mass. Right? So all time is present to God. So you can enter in. It's like time travel, in a way. You can enter into the mystery when you place yourself there. So let's say we're meditating on the mystery of the crucifixion. You can announce the mystery, read about the crucifixion, and then you enter in and you enter this way. You imagine yourself there so much so that you can feel the rocks that you're walking on, that you can feel the cold air and you see the darkness coming and the dark clouds and you hear the soldiers screaming and you can look around and you see Mary Magdalene and you see St. John and you see the other people there, right? You look at, you see the Pharisees, they're yelling at Jesus and mocking him and you are there and you can smell the smells and feel the pain, the suffering and you look upon Christ and now you are there and what do you do? You say, Mother Mary, Come and accompany me. And this is what will happen. Every rosary will be unique. Every rosary you pray will be different. It won't be the same. Because when you enter into the mystery, what happened that God did, God did something of infinite value, right? Something infinite that we can contemplate for all eternity and never fully understand. And so when you enter into the mystery, you begin to understand and see things differently. It's amazing. And then this is some of the things will happen. You will begin to hear. You will hear sometimes Our Lady will speak to you. She'll speak to your heart. You won't hear her with your ears, but you'll hear her in your heart. Or you'll hear our Lord. You know, if uh, you're meditating on the mystery of the transfiguration and you're there, our Lord may speak to you as you're going up the hill with Peter and James and John climbing up Mount Tabor, right? If you place yourself there and you, you get out of breath as you're climbing, you enter into the mystery. Have you ever prayed the rosary like this? It is awesome. It is miraculous. And Our Lady comes, because why? She promised 
that those who meditate on the mysteries of her son, that she would come and bring her spouse, the Holy Spirit, who will give you the grace to know her son as she knows him. What a gift. What a gift. Okay. And then the other thing you do, this is before you pray, you offer your needs and your wants and your prayers and all the people who have asked you to pray for them, you give them to Our Lady. And you say, Mary, I offer this rosary to you, right? I reconsecrate my life to you as Jesus gave himself to you, and I offer you all of these needs that I have, and you give them to her, right? And then I give you this rosary. And what happens is then she takes everything and she prepares something. All your needs, your prayers, your wants, your sufferings, she prepares them, and when you pray the rosary, she puts it into a flower or a bouquet to present to God. And how does God receive this? How does God receive the rosary that you prayed? When you receive communion, Jesus comes into you, and guess what he finds? He finds the rose that Our Lady put there. Can you imagine the joy that he receives? He finds that bouquet that Our Lady left there, and it's all that you have to offer combined with her love, and he finds it. Can you imagine the joy? Now, there's many ways to pray the rosary. You can pray it individually, but one of the things that's so wonderful is the rosary, when you pray it with other people, you receive the benefits of their rosaries. So if you pray by yourself, you receive a benefit of praying the rosary, right? The merit for that. But when you pray it with two people, you receive two merits. When you pray it with 50 people in a prayer group, you receive the graces of 50. So if you're alone, what do you do? Okay, I have a young lady that I knew really well, and she had a gift. She could hear Our Lady in her heart. She received interior locutions. Young gal, she was probably 22, 23 years old. And do you know what she would do when she would pray the rosary? She would always invite Our Lady to come. And she said Our Lady would come and stand beside her. And Our Lady would recite the Our Fathers and the Glory Bees. And Our Lady would let her say the Hail Marys. And Our Lady would pray the rosary with her every single decade and would stand beside her. Isn't that beautiful? So you invite Our Lady to pray with you. St. Dominic he wrote down 15, 15 promises that Our Lady made, that Our Lady made to him, to whoever prays the rosary. Have you ever read the 15 promises that Our Lady gave St. Dominic? Some of you may have. I'm gonna just briefly mention them, okay? You can, this is something you could go look up. Whoever shall faithfully serve me by reciting the rosary shall receive signal graces signal graces, signs. They will receive signs from heaven on how to live their life. I promise my special protection and the greatest graces to everyone who prays the rosary. The rosary will be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. The rosary will cause virtue and good works to flourish the soul which recommends itself to me by reciting the rosary shall not perish. Whoever shall recite the rosary devoutly, considering its sacred mystery, shall never be conquered by misfortune. God will not chastise him in his justice, but he will receive mercy. Whoever shall have a true devotion to the rosary shall not die without the sacraments. Those who are faithful to recite the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God so that they may see. I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. The faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. You will obtain all you ask of me by reciting the rosary. All those who propagate, that means spread the rosary, right? 
shall be aided by me in all their necessities. 13, I have obtained from my divine son that all the advocates of the rosary shall have for intercessors, that means people are interceding for you if you pray the rosary, the entire celestial court during their life. All who recite the rosary are my special sons and brothers and daughters of Jesus Christ. And devotion to my rosary is a sign of predestination. We don't believe in predestination, but it's a sign that that soul is chosen, one of the elect written in the book of life. Sounds pretty good, huh? Sounds pretty good. I want to tell you a few stories. I like stories, and uh, sometimes they help. So the story that St. Dominic tells is there was a woman that came to him for confession. And St. Dominic tells her that she must recite the whole rosary, all the decades, not just five decades, the whole rosary. Oh, it's such a burden. Oh, this is a long penance. So she does it, right? She does it. Well, the woman in her sleep has a vision and she sees herself standing before the throne of God and there is a scale, one of those scales, you know, that weighs like this. And they put all the merits of her life on one side and they put all the things that are not good on the other side. And it went like this. And she realizes that she will not go to heaven, that she has been lazy and whatever, right? And then all of a sudden Our Lady came up and dropped the rosary. And the scale goes like that. And St. Dominic tells how this woman changed her life, prayed the rosary every day, because the merits of one rosary were that powerful. Okay, Our Lady of Fatima, this is what she told the little children. She said, there is not a single problem in the entire world that cannot be solved by praying the rosary. God has given it tremendous efficacy, she told the children. I know a woman and she works with exorcists and she's the first woman ever allowed to attend the Vatican training on exorcism. And she went there and Father Amorth, you've heard of Father Gabriel Amorth, he's written all these books, he's not alive any longer. But there's another priest, Father Bomonte, he's there, he's taken over as the exorcist of Rome, and she went there to train under them. Father Bomonte, he didn't want a woman. He thought that uh, this woman would kind of hinder the exorcism. Now, we don't need a lay person here, we have priests. Well, anyway, a cardinal from the United States had written a letter on behalf of this woman, and so he, he was overruled, and he had to let her come. And uh, he says, what are you hoping to get out of this? And she said, well, I prayed to God because I am coming from a Protestant background. I converted to <coughs> Catholicism. She says, I have prayed that God will show me Our Lady's role. And Father Monte just kind of rolled his eyes and said, okay, come in. <laughs> so anyway, she's in the exorcism. And this person begins to have this voice come out of their mouth, right? It was a 98-pound woman. Six men had trouble holding her down. She said because it was a training, they had 35 priests standing in the background observing. 35 priests. And all of a sudden, this voice says, I am Satan. And the woman is forcing me to speak about the rosary. And he starts screaming, howling, and he the woman turns her head to Father Bomonte and he said, you do this. And all of a sudden he goes, okay, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. The woman is forcing me to speak about the rosary. So guess what? He said this, among other things, he gave a long treatise on the power and the merits of the rosary and he's screaming the whole time and he doesn't want to and he's fighting. And they said, she said that you could see the woman's face being pressed as if someone was forcing, right? Satan to say this. And this was the main thing. 
The woman says the rosary binds the demons. And this is the great secret that I have tried to keep hidden from the world. The rosary binds demons. Isn't that amazing? So anyway, she said, Father Bomonte, after that, he looked at her and he says, you got the answer to your prayer, didn't you? <laughs> and then he wrote a book on this. So there's a book out about this one exorcism and about this teaching that Satan gave because Mary forced him to. And he could never say the word Mary. He just called her the woman. You may have heard this story, but there was a man and I heard him give a talk and he was a wealthy guy. And he talked about how he had everything money could buy. And he had homes in different countries. He had boats, yachts, airplanes, had everything. And his wife became an alcoholic and she had to enter a rehab. And he, anyway, she ended up staying in some kind of a clinic for months or years. He couldn't even have her at home. And his children, he had a couple of children and they went wayward. And um, he had no relationship with them. And so this man became angry. He said, if there is a God, you have created a horrible, ugly world full of suffering. I am miserable. I have all of these things, and I'm so miserable. And he got angrier and angrier. He began cursing God, hated God. I don't ever want to be with you. If you are, if you're really there, God, I, I despise you. And he was terrible, terrible. Well, anyway, the guy has a heart attack. And he grabs his heart, and he knows he's dying. And so he begins cursing God, swearing at him. And the next thing he knows, he sees a corridor and a door at the end, and he knew where it went. And he says to himself, yes, I don't want to be with God. That's where I want to go. I hate God. And he goes, and he's just about to open the door. And all of a sudden, right next to the door, a woman appears. And he describes her, he said he looked at her and he had never seen anything so beautiful. He says love just radiated from her. And she looked at him and she said, are you sure you want to go through that door? She said, you used to pray the rosary with me when you were a child. And you asked me to come at the hour of your death. And I am here. Do you want to go through that door? And he said, no. All of a sudden, the next thing you know, he's being revived. They got his heart beating again. This guy traveled all over the world telling this story. Went to the place where his wife was, got his wife out, cared for her, changed everything, made amends with his children. He said it took a lot of work. It was really hard to change his life because he had been living a different way. But he said he wants the world to know the power of the prayer to Our Lady. I remember, I'm gonna tell a story about myself. One time I was praying with a group of people and we were maybe eight or 10 people and we were praying the rosary. That was a very devout rosary. Um, and we were praying very slowly, not, not the Indy 500 <laughs> rosary, but the, the slow rosary, very meditative. And as we were praying, we were on the fifth sorrowful mystery but all of a sudden, I felt myself kneeling at the foot of the cross and I could see these feet in front of me. And it was real clear, it was in my imagination, my eyes were closed, but I could see these feet and I could see this nail going right through these feet and the skin ripped and I could see the pressure of the body on the nail and the blood dripping down. And I remember looking at these feet and I thought, he did this for me. And I started to cry as the rosary. I started just put my head down, I was crying. And uh, it was so moving and it was so real. Well, after the rosary finished, uh, we were just sitting around, some of us were talking and this one lady comes up to me, the same lady that uh, used to invite Mary to pray with her, right? That same young lady and she comes up to me and she said, uh, I saw you. She said, you were washing Jesus' feet with your tears. And I said, how did you know that? She says, I, I saw it. So you can enter into the mysteries. You can do it. It happened to me. I just want to tell you that the rosary is the most beautiful prayer you can ever pray if you pray it right. John Paul II said, please don't pray it too fast. 
And I know a lot of times we pray the rosary and we think it's more meditative, we pray it quickly, and sometimes people have gotten in the habit of praying it very fast, um, and that's okay, Our Lady accepts that, but I would tell you, it's always better to try to pray as if you're speaking to Jesus and Mary, all right? And if Mary was in front of you, would you say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee? No. And she is there. And so if you pray from the heart, you don't have to pray it in slow motion, but if you pray from the heart, put your entire self into the prayer as you meditate. So I'm going to end my talk now, all right? But I really, truly recommend that you all pray the rosary and make it a habit in your life. I saw the results at my father's funeral and the rosary, the, the effects that it had in his life. He had a great love for Our Lady and he prayed the rosary every day for 54 years. And often he would pray all four of the mysteries, right? So that would be uh, 20 decades, almost every day. And so my brother goes, Guy, I wonder how many times he asked Our Lady to come to him at the hour of his death. So we started calculating how many, rose, how many Hail Marys a day, maybe 200, right? And then we calculated times 365 days, times 54 years, right, whatever. And he asked Our Lady to come to him over one million times, maybe way more than that. And I can tell you that my father's death was a really, really beautiful, glorious death. Uh, there was no sorrow, really. There was just a lot of joy and thankfulness for his life. And so I know that you all want that too, for yourselves and your families. So I encourage you to pray the rosary. Amen. Okay.